Okay, this question says the depth of water in a port is modelled by the function d of t is equal to p cos qt plus 7.5 for t is between 0 and 12, where t is the number of hours after high tide. Then it says at high tide the depth of the water is 9.7 metres. At low tide, which is 7 hours later, the depth of the water is 5.3 is metres. Then part A says find p. So if we look here at the function, p is the multiplier for the cos function. So p is basically going to be the amplitude of the wave. Okay, now the amplitude is the distance between the peak and the top or from the centre. So that would be the amplitude, and that would also be the amplitude. Now we know that the peak is here 9.7. And we know that the lowest value is 5.3. So the amplitude is going to be half that difference. So it's going to be 9.7 minus 5.3 divided by 2. So that's 4.4 divided by 2. So that's going to be 2.2 meters. All right. Next it says find the value of Q. So that would be part A. So B, Q. Q is going to be the angular velocity. So Q is basically going to be omega, so Q is going to equal omega, which is going to be 2 pi divided by the time period. So we know that the time period is, or we know that the time between the high and the low is 7 hours, so therefore the time period is going to be 2 lots of that. So time period is going to be 2 times 7, which is going to be 14 because we've got the time between the high tide here and the low tide here. One full cycle would continue back up again to the next high tide here, which would be double this time, so it would be, we would be 14. So therefore, Q is going to be 2 pi over 14, which I could write as pi over 7. Okay, and then it says, using the model to find the depth of the water 10 hours after high tide. So all we need to do here is just put the numbers in. We know what P is, we know what Q is, we know what T is. Substitute the numbers in. So we should do part C. And we're going to say the depth is going to equal. So it was 2.2 cos pi over 7 times 10 and then plus... 7.5. So I can then work out what that is. So D is going to be, if I get my calculator out, make sure I'm in radians mode because we're dealing with multiples of pi. So if I do pi times 10 and divide by 7, I can then do cosine of that, multiply that by 2.2, and then add 7.5, which gives me 7.01 meters and that should be the answer okay this question says consider a geometric sequence where the first term is 768 and the second term is 576 it says find the least value of n such that the nth term of the sequence is less than 7 all right so we're talking about geometric sequence here and we're talking about nth term so if we consult our data sheet, we can see this one here it says the nth term of a geometric sequence, and then it says un is equal to u1 r to the n minus 1. So I'm just going to write that down on the other page. So un is equal to u1 r to the n minus 1. So this here means the nth term, which we're talking about here. This u1 means the first term, which would be this one, 768. R here is the common ratio in the geometric sequence, which we can calculate in a minute. And then here n will be the number of the terms. So this is what we've got to try to find. So we're always trying to find n, putting in the values here. So un is equal to the nth term. which in this case is going to need to be 7. That's actually going to be less than 7. U1 is the first term, which 
which is equal to 768. R is the common ratio, which we can calculate by doing the second term divided by the first term, or the third term divided by the second term. Since we've only got two terms, we'll do the second term, 576, divided by the first term, 768. That works out to be 0 0.75. And then n is the number that we're looking for. n is the number of the term which we want to find. OK, so we're going to substitute these values in here, and then we'll do a bit of algebra to work out what n is. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to work out what n is, first of all, when un is equal to 7. So ignore the fact this has to be less than, and then later we'll round it off to the nearest integer to work out what it is. So I'm going to set 7 is equal to 768 multiplied by 0 0.75 to the power of n minus 1. Now what I can do next is I can divide both sides by 768 and write that round the other way. So I'm going to say 0 0.75 to the power of n minus 1 is equal to 7 over 768. I can then, to deal with this power here, I can then take logs of both sides and then use a log law. So I'm going to say log of 0 0.75 m minus 1 is equal to log of 7 over 768. And then I can use the log power law, take this power down and put it in the front. So I can say that n minus 1 multiplied by the log of 0 0.75 is equal to the log of 7 over 768. I can then divide by the log of 0 0.75 to give me n minus 1, and then add 1 to give me n. So n is going to equal the log of 7 over 768, and then that's going to be divided by the log of 0 0.75, and then the whole thing is going to be plus 1. Alright, so I can work that out, and that will give me the term number for when the, that the term is 7. So that's not going to be an integer, but I'll work that out, and then n will be the, the answer that we need will be the next valid integer. So if I get my calculator, I can do 7 divided by 768, and then take the log of that, and then I can divide that by 0 0.75 and take the log of that. It gives me 16.33, add the 1, it gives me 17.33. So that will give me 17.33. Now, that's not an integer, so what we'd need is the nth term where uh, the value is less than 7. It's going to be the 18th term because it would be the 17.33 would give me exactly 7, so the next number would be the first one where it's less than 7, it's going to be the 18th term. This question says, let f of x equal x squared minus 1, and g of x equal x squared minus 2, for x is all real numbers. And then part a says, show that f of g of x is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 4x squared plus 3. So what this notation here means, f function of f of g of x. So it means, first of all, work out function g, and then take that answer and place it into function x. So what we need to do is take the whole of function g here and replace it for the x in function f. So I'm just going to move down here and write that again. So part a, so it said f of x was equal to x squared minus 1, and g of x was equal to x squared minus 2. And then we've got to work out f of g of x. So that's going to be place the whole of function g in place of the x in function f. So it's going to be x squared minus 2 squared and then minus 1. So what I would do then would be multiply out this bracket here. So I've got x squared minus 2 squared. So I'm just going to write that out. So we're going to have x squared minus 2 and then multiply by x squared minus 2 again and then minus 1. So when I multiply this, I'd multiply this term by this term, 
which gives me x to the power of 4. I would then multiply this x squared by this minus 2. So this minus 2x squared. This minus 2 by this x squared, which gives me minus 2x squared again. Then minus 2 times minus 2, which gives me plus 4. And then that minus 1 from the end. So that's going to give me x to the power of 4 minus 4x squared plus 3. I can just go back and check that that's the answer that we should have had. Yes, x, x to the power of 4 minus 4x squared plus 3. Then it says, on the following graph, on the following grid, sorry, sketch the graph of f of g of x between x is 0 and 2.25. All right, so for this one, you need to use your graphical calculator, plot this function, and then sketch it on there. So what I'm going to do is use Wolfram Alpha, plot that on there, have a look, and then sketch it onto the grid. Okay, so entering this equation into Wolfram Alpha, or into your graphical calculator, we'll get a graph of it, which is going to look like this. So we can see the function here. Um, so I'm just going to highlight the key points and then we'll use those to place on the grid so we can do the sketch. So it starts off with a value, y value of 3 here. Passes down through the axes here at 1. Passes through a minimum where y is minus 1. Passes back through the axes at x is 1.7. And then goes off up here to 8 at 2.25. So if we come back to the grid here. So I've just marked on these key points. So it starts with the x value of, sorry, with the y value of 3, passes through the grid when x is 1, passes to the minimum down here when y is minus 1, passes back through the grid here and then up. So I will just attempt to join those up. So that's the best way to draw a curve is just to mark on the key points and then join them up sort of like that. All right. So what we need next is it says the equation f of g of x equals k has exactly two solutions between x is between 0 and 2.25. Find the possible values of k. All right, so what we need is here where this would be equal to k and two solutions. So if we take our graph here, so where this could be equal to k would be if I was to draw a horizontal line across here. So if k had this value, you can see it intersects the curve at one point here, k would only have one solution. What we're looking for is two solutions, so I wouldn't want that one. Let's take that line and move it down here a bit. If it was here, you could see it would now have two solutions because it would just touch the top of the curve here and here. And anywhere along here, it would also still have two solutions, this one here, this one here. As I move it down here, it would still have two solutions here and here, and it would continue to have two solutions right down until we reach the point here. So just at this point here, it would have two solutions on top of each other, just as it touched the curve, and then if it went further down here, now there would be no solutions. So what we're looking for is values of k between that purple line there and that purple line there. So anywhere between these two values, any horizontal line that I draw would cut the curve twice, so the value of k would have two values. So we could see on the axis here, k would be between minus 1 and 3. So anywhere of those, we would cut the, line, the, the curve at two points, so that would be the answer. So for part C, k would be between minus 1 and 3 to give two solutions for possible values of k.